I used to be all hockey. 150 games a year on the ice every hour, every minute that I could. She was the girl who captured the uh, hearts of Canadians and the attention of the media when she was 12 years old. She was fighting for a fundamental human right. She put herself out there. She took a chance. She missed everything. I was one of those kids that always wanted to do things perfect. And in a household initially where girls had certain jobs and boys had certain jobs, certain sports for girls, ballet, tap dancing, gymnastics. My brother was allowed to play the rough and tough sports. I'd be playing hockey every Saturday and the family would come out and support me and cheer me on. My dad would take him to hockey games and talk to him about hockey, get all excited. We never really got excited about me doing figure eights and figure skating and wearing little dresses. Justine at the time, as a, as a young kid, might have gotten a little bit jealous. My brother would come home with trophies, I'd come home with little badges. I said, Mom, I really want to play hockey. Girls don't play hockey. I think there may be some girls' leagues, but maybe they start later, do some more figure skating. It took a while to change my mom and, and get her to see things right. Justine persevered and kept on uh, asking. She finally found me a, a girls' team. She was a good hockey player, and it wasn't competitive enough for her playing, playing with the girls, and, and uh, she wanted to play with the guys. You're looking at double the amount of games, double the amount of practices, twice the length of season. And I wanted body checking. That asset that I had wasn't as valuable in women's hockey as it was in men's hockey. The coaches from, from my brother's team used to say, well, why don't you play for us? Tend you're a boy. And at first, hey, no big deal. I was flat chested. I had short hair. Justine, Justin didn't make much of a difference. Not a lot of people uh, knew that she was she was a girl. In fact, her name was Justin on the on the actual uh, roster sheet. But it didn't take very long till I thought, you know what? I want to play as Justine. I really want to play as a girl on on these hockey teams with people my own age and my um, own caliber. She was ineligible because of her gender. The Ontario Human Rights Code, Section 19.2, said that you could discriminate on the basis of sex in sport. So I, I finally wrote a letter in the newspaper saying, could somebody help me because this just wasn't fair and, and somebody's got to change something. And I really didn't understand the repercussions and, and how much of a big deal this really was going to be. It was pretty much immediate that the next day we had a phone call saying, I, you know, I think I might have found a lawyer that, who could help you. And we phoned that lawyer, and that was Jay Anna Fraser. And she helped guide us into the legal intricacies. She actually had one-on-one -on -one conversations with me as a big lawyer and a 10-year-old, um, and, and spent hours with me to find out if I truly wanted to fight for this case. It was scary, and uh, I'm usually not lost for words, but when there's a hundred cameras and you've never been on, you know, in that type of spotlight before, there's 30 microphones in front of you, and you're not really sure which one you should begin to. She was in grade seven or grade eight, and still she, had under she understood the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. She understood what her constitutional rights were, and she understood that the hockey establishment were a bunch of bullies and she wasn't gonna back down. And the people who were supporting me were so much older. Uh, so I really didn't feel as if um, I was being supported by the community at large. At school one day, grade four or five, she came home in September and she said nobody would talk to me. My girlfriends were all told by their parents not to talk to that Justine Blaney. Justine Blaney's a troublemaker. I would get spit on, I would get pushed, I would get chatted about as I walked by people in the arenas, particularly when I'd go to a women's hockey game. Do I want to continue with this? Do I want to lose all my friends? Do I want to have trouble for my own family? 
when it may never come true. A girl that wants to play hockey, it's as simple as that, with a bunch of guys that want to play with her. You know, that, those are the basics. The majority of the opposition that I faced during the, the many years of this court case was from women, my female friends, but in particularly from Ontario women's hockey. They believed, wrongly, that women's hockey would fall apart if women and men played together. They would take my teammates, people who were being subpoenaed to speak against me, and bring them in, four adults on one child or teenager, and say, look, this girl's ruining women's hockey. It won't be here for you if you don't sign this petition. She got hate mail. She got death threats. People were violent. When you're being pushed by a stranger down the stairs into a moving subway because you're Justine Blaney, or being chased out of a bus and towards your home because you're Justine Blaney, those were moments that made it scary and, and frightful for for myself, and, and many of the times I wouldn't even tell my mom about them. I couldn't help but be brave because my daughter was so brave, because it wasn't easy. If she can do it, I can do it too. Her teammates were great. Her teammates supported her. Her brother was fabulous. My brother and I are best friends. During the court case was a time where he sh truly showed his colors. I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned uh, through that court battle. And one is sticking to your guns and sticking to what you believe in. In this case, it was gender equality in sports. It was the test case for Section 15. Section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it's the equality clause. It's the clause that says, you know, before and under the law that, that, that women and men are, are considered equal. She won at the Ontario Court of Appeal very soundly. And then the Hockey Association appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada. It's a matter of taking it, taking it to the highest level. The Supreme Court ruled that they would not hear leave to appeal. They would not hear the Hockey Association's case. In other words, the Supreme Court said the Hockey Association doesn't have a leg to stand on. Justine removed the, the law that said you can discriminate with respect to sport and sex. It was front page news right across the country. I had won in the Supreme Court of Canada, I had won in the Human Rights Commission, it had been four years. And when I phoned my coach, I was ecstatic. Oh my goodness, I can play, I can play, I can play. And he said, I'm sorry Justine, I gave your spot away last night. And unfortunately he had signed uh, another uh, defenseman to play on the team. I hung up the phone, I was devastated. David said, well, there's only one thing to do. And Justine and I looked at him and he picked up the phone. He didn't tell us what he was going to do. Justine deserved the, the right to play. She had made our team. He phoned right back and said, you know, if there were a spot, could my sister have it? And the coach said, yes. He said, fine, I quit. I'm a boy. I can find a team in a week. My sister can have my spot. So I gave up my spot for her. She hit the ice and David was in the stairs. And probably that, that is a, a very fine example of the friendship between them. It was a, a great game, it was a lot of fun. We were very proud of her, had the whole family out to watch her. You know she has this big beautiful smile and that's how she, outlook. I think it mimics her outlook on life. Like she's a very warm hearted person, and very giving. And uh, underneath that smile is this also a really fierce competitive person. I don't think it sunk in until a few games later that, wow, I've had a few good hits under my belt. I've taken a few good hits. And this is what I was meant to do. The naysayers said, if you go on, if you allow women to play on boys' teams, then there won't be any women's teams. That was a paranoia response, not an intelligent response, because the reality is it allowed hundreds of more ladies to play hockey. So it grew the sport. Women's hockey has grown exponentially. And it's now in the media, it's in the Olympics, it's in your face. 
Justine today is uh, a wonderful ball of energy. Uh, she's uh, a mom, a new mom. So she's, she's turned her efforts to coaching, she's turned her efforts to fun hockey for herself that takes less time, but allows more time for, for being a mother, for being a chiropractor, for being a coach of human beings. I think if she hadn't been able to, to move forward through hockey with the court case, uh, it would have affected her as well. I don't think she would be the same person that she is today by any means. So it's given something back to her the same way that she's been able to give back to the community. To recognize females as strong, as athletic, as skilled is, is very, very important for our whole society and certainly for my little girl.